This episode is brought to you by the Nano Team. Number one. Welcome to Around the Board, a show where four board game enthusiasts discuss board game topics and news. Today's show begins with another great game debate, after which we mix it up with trade shelf play. Trailing that, we talk trash, then we'll bring it home with a Grand Slam topic, the top selling board games of all time. Now, here are your hosts, Daniel Connors, John Theismann, Chris Thomason, and Andy Barnett. Join us as we go Around the Board. Hey, Andy, you're looking pretty different there today. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's because I'm wearing sunglasses. I uh, I just got back ah, from Hollywood. That so, must be uh, it. Just showing That's... off a little, having my, my Hollywood look going. I mean, I've always heard from... that Hollywood changes people, but I didn't think expect anything quite like this. It's the fountain of youth, baby. I mean, they do all <laughs> act like children out there, so that doesn't They do, sense. they do. No, I just got back from TFCon, which I know we talked about it on previous shows. I went to one in Chicago, but I went to the one this time in Los Angeles. Um, was cool. Andy? For those what? that don't know, what is TF? Oh, TF, that would stand for Transformers. Whoa. Is trans yeah. is this a Transformers podcast? No, but it, it should be, maybe. <laughs> look look at what <laughs> I, mean, I got. Definitely- a fan. A fan gave me this. Look at this. This is so cool. Look at this. This thing's awesome. Whoa. Oh wow, pretty that is cool. pretty cool. Pretty cool. Is that reflective? Yeah, it's reflective. It's a green reflective maximal logo. Oh, oh sorry, wow. I'm making you guys dizzy. I better put this down. <laughs> okay anyway <laughs> yeah i had a great time I, I it was it was a lot of fun I actually had some interesting stories so the, because this one was in los angeles there was a whole bunch more voice actors there so one of the cool things that happened is i don't know if this will mean anything to you guys it might um were you guys fans of transformers growing up oh i loved beast wars it was one okay. of my favorite cartoons i was too old for transformers well you probably remember generation one transformers right john g1 no I mean, I remember them. I didn't play with Transformers as a kid. Well, one of the actors that played uh, played on the G1 series uh, that was there was also uh, in He-Man. His name is Alan Oppenheimer. And I grew up, I was a huge He-Man Masters of the Universe fan. You guys fans of that at all? (laughs) No. No? What what did you say? I was distracted by my incredible joke that you missed. Yeah, I I got distracted (laughs) by his really bad joke as well. What did you say? I didn't even hear it. You said the guy's name, and I said, "Hey, that's my name too." Uh, Jingle Myers, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, like uh, Jingle, Jingle Myers, Jacob uh-huh. Jingleheimer uh-huh. Schmidt. Uh-huh. Wow, I see. Mm-hmm. I, I knew where you were going with it, Daniel. <laughs> I appreciated it. I, I thought maybe you'd make reference to uh, the other Oppenheimer who was behind the uh, the Manhattan Project. Ah, yes. But no, Alan Oppenheimer. He voiced a Transformer, but he also voiced Skeletor in He Man. Ah, very iconic character. So the story goes like this, right? Uh, all of us actors get to go back into this green room area where we have uh, lunch and stuff. And so we're sitting at a table. I brought my son with me, brought Elijah with me. <laughs> and we're sitting next to Alan Oppenheimer and he offers Elijah a cookie from his lunch. His, he didn't want to eat the cookie. So he said, you oh. want this cookie, Elijah? And I said, Elijah, never take a cookie from Skeletor. And he Skeletor. Said, no. <laughs> and then Oppenheimer, who's 93 years old, mind you, wow, breaks into his Skeletor laugh and goes, ha <laughs> He does that whole thing. It was awesome. Oh man, that's oh awesome. my gosh, that's it was cool. iconic, man. Was did so you gr- did you geek cool. out? Oh yeah, I was totally geeking out. Did you have him sign your C Mon He Man? No, no, no. I gotta act. I'm I'm I'm, an, yeah. I'm a fellow actor. I've got to act oh, cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> Can't get well, autographs. You, have, you haven't even received it yet, right? I mean, I know I've seen it recently. People getting it received, but you you still haven't got yours, right? Mine is not uh, showed up yet. Oh. I'm hoping any day now it'll be oh. on my doorstep. Fun fact: He also played Falcor, the dragon in the Neverending Story. Falcor. <laughs> was right. that the dog that flew yes yeah it okay. was kind of a flying dog dragon okay yeah that's a weird thing <laughs> hold no, on that's as weird as what we're experiencing right now so what if we just uh get back to normal everybody uh repeat after me <laughs> Whoa, what was that oh wow well, I feel I feel different. Oh, I feel like I gained like three hundred pounds. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the camera, Chris. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. Right. Wait. All right. Well, none of that. Enough of that nonsense. Let's talk about what the people really came here for. Andy, what time is it? It's time for a healthy breakfast. This time, your kids will eat it. <laughs> Not that one. The other one. Yeah. Oh yeah, that. Time to play the game. 
That's right. It's time to play the game. Around the board is all about debating different topics within tabletop gaming in four unique segments, each hosted by one of us schlubs. Uh, behind the scenes, Judge will award points at the end of the show. Whomever has the most points will be crowned King of Meeple Town, able to sit on their soap throne and dribble whatever nonsensical anecdotes they like. Dribble? Like a basketball or like... Maybe. Like, Maybe. Is it, it is March Madness. Anyway, <laughs> now it's time to play the game. Round one. Fight! All right, guys. Well, today in the great game debate, we are going to talk about the classic, the great game of Tzolkin. Wait, wait. Zolkin. Sorry. Just Zolkin. It's a two to four players, plays in 90 minutes. It's a track game with gears that move and uh, super exciting. But you know what? Let's go to the table and take a look exactly how it plays. Zolkin is a worker placement game that takes place over 26 rounds. Each round is notated by the spin of the gear at the center of the table. This gear is going to move the five smaller gears. And the point of that is that it's going to advance where the workers are on the tracks. In Zolkin, on your turn, you get to take one of two actions. You are either going to place your person on the next available space on any one track, or you're going to remove your pieces. When you place your workers on a track, nothing will happen. The excitement is when they are removed from the track. When they're removed from the track, they're going to take the action that their pawn is next to. Each track specializes in a specific resource. The green track will specialize in food and wood. The gray track will specialize in resources that are often used for building buildings. The orange track is largely used for advancing your technology and for building buildings. The yellow track is kind of a hodgepodge used for going up on the god track, recruiting workers, or building buildings using food. The final track is the blue track. You're going to use these blue skulls to place on the location to score the points and to advance up the god track. The other portion of the game is advancing tracks. The god tracks is a race to the top. Whoever gets to the top first gets the most points. You also have technology tracks. As these technologies advance, you are given rewards for your worker placement actions. And then last is the track for the buildings. When you have enough resources to complete the buildings, you can complete them by taking a worker off one of the building locations. At the end of 26 rounds, whoever has the most victory points is the winner of Zulkin. All right. Thanks, Daniel. That was great. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, zulkin has been around for several years since 2012. Do you guys know what the Zulkin Mayan calendar is? Because I think Chris has been or Andy is very confused by that. Do you guys know what the Mayan calendar is? I thought it went out of date in 2012. It did. It predicted the end of the world. Not and really. when the ca uh, Mayan calendar ends, everything was going to be destroyed. Well, the, so the end of the world as we know it. Well, exactly. Which they may not have been far from the truth. I mean, it's but that's a topic long. for another day. Yes. So I always right. just thought it was a backup date for Y2K. <laughs> it was. It was Y2K part two. Wow. It was like it wasn't as popular as the original. So the, the sequel was lacking. <laughs> That's true. But That's is this game happened. lacking? That's the real question. So let's just jump into it, guys. Um, I'm going to give you my thoughts first. So yeah. Zulkin is a game that I grew to like. Uh, initially, I was like, OK with it. I did buy it because it was like in my early stages of buying games where I was like, well, they say this one's good. I'm going to buy it. But it didn't take me until the pandemic to actually really sink my teeth into this game and really get a joy out of it because I played it um, largely on Board Game Arena. And it's a it's wonderful on Board Game Arena because of all the gears that move around when you don't have to do that manually and it, the system just does it for you. It's a uh, it's a little it's it's uh, makes the whole game kind of run smoother. Also, uh, when you hit the undo button, it's really fun to watch because it goes and I love me some undo buttons. So, 
But this game, I will say, it is aesthetically pleasing. In a world of 1,000 Euro games, you have to have some kind of edge to bring that person in. And I think those those gears is exactly what does it for this game. And they're not just a gimmick. They work so well. Chris and I have talked in the past about how this game just doesn't work without those gears. And one of the best things about that gears, other than the way that it looks, is it it, it forces you to forward think about your turns because you are actually planning your movements on like five different gears. And every round, your uh, meeples are going to advance one space. And you have to know when to pull those off and reap the benefits and when to stay. Uh, it's just a really crunchy game. It makes you get into this really fun puzzle space. There's fun tracks on it. Overall, Zolkin is great. It lives up to the hype. And I highly recommend it. So, John, the, I see you looking John, disgusted down there. Before we get to John, I got to say something. What? what? Come at me, bro. The way you pronounced it at first, isn't that, how, isn't that from Street Fighter 2? Tazolkin. Tazolkin. <laughs> maybe. Maybe that's where they got their inspiration. Maybe it wasn't about these racing people at all. <laughs> Might have a point. Whoa, wow, Andy got a point for that. That's pretty good. <laughs> God, Andy. <laughs> well, let's see how many uh, points you can get, John. Let's hear man, it. Man, that's already behind Andy. and He hasn't even had a, had a turn yet. That's pretty bad. Uh, well, I agree with you on one thing, uh, Daniel. I think every time I've played Zolkin, I've wished I, I've wished I had an undo button. <laughs> Can we play something else, please? Um, I, I don't get the fascination with this game. I really don't. The gear, he, and the gears are the thing everybody likes about him. And then Daniel just said, "Well, it's so much better online because you don't have to mess with the gears." I thought the gears were the big, the big cool thing about this game. Apparently, it's not. To me, a game like Coloma, I think, is better. You got a cool little thing you spin around that's just as neat, but you got a thematic game that actually lives up to the theme. Uh, instead of worrying about, come on, I, let me quote the late Joan Rivers here. Can we talk <laughs> feeding your workers? Give me a break. Is that fun for anyone to feed their freaking workers? That's not fun. That's not fun at all. And say, well, you got to feed your workers. What are they supposed to do? Well, I don't have to feed my workers in any other game. Then why do I have to feed them in here? It's not fun. It's a waste of time. And it's, it, it's a whole section of the board that could be something better. And it's sorry, it's that's ridiculous. And that's what really, besides everything else, besides the lack of theme, besides the somewhat monotonous play, and besides that, once you add the feeding the workers, that's the, the final nail in the Zolkin coffin. And besides that, the whole thing, if there is a theme, like I've said before, it's human sacrifice. What do you think you're doing to move up? <laughs> Gods, how do you think they moved up? All right, so a couple, true. Thing, you, you a do couple have things scores. real quick. A couple things real quick. What I'd understand is that, first of all, you'd rather play Glaucoma than, than Zulkin. <laughs> and, and, and then second of all, you missed the ultimate pun of all time. You should have said, uh -oh. what really grinds my gears. Oh, very good. Because, you know what really grinds my gears? I was at the oh, end Daniel, of my seat Daniel wanting to say that, well. Chris. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Why and, and didn't I, I? I, I, have to, uh, I have to defend myself against... Uh, John real quick because he attacked me in his little uh, solo shot. You got to understand the gears make that game and in person they are exciting, but online it helps you wrap your mind around it. I would actually say if you've had troubles wrapping your mind around this game, you should play it online. And once you don't have to mess with the fiddliness of it, there it might go. actually click a little bit. Don't better. have so, to mess with the fiddliness. Can, that's, oh, a, that's a can you. Can you explain the, right the fiddliness? Can you tell us more about the <laughs> well, fiddliness? It's not fiddly. It's just, no, I can't expand on it. Just know that it's fiddly, fiddly fingers. All right, Chris, get us off this topic. Yeah, no, no, I'm going to lean into it because I don't understand what Daniel was talking about either. Like, like I guess I can see what you're saying. Like, maybe online you can do some practice games and, like, you can back them up if you screwed up or something. I don't understand. And, and playing the game, like, again, Mr. I don't care about components and art, but... The, the gears do look cool and they do make the game functional, but I think it's super gratifying to move the gears. That's why when you were saying you like don't like doing it, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, it's super gratifying to move those gears. But um, yeah, so 
I've liked this game for a long time. I'm Mr. Old Man. I started playing this when the game first came out. Uh, and so th this game in particular was very interesting for me with, with our game group is that uh, we played it for years and then there was a lull and then I joined this game group. And then, you know, I tried to show the game to people a couple of times. I'm like, no one could care less about it. And then we go to like COVID happens. And all of a sudden on our like Facebook page for our gamer group, like they just start, start talking about the game like crazy. I'm like, I told you people about this game. Why did you listen to me? And it was it was very frustrating, but whatever. But if the, since you can do it online, then, then now let's listen. But let's not listen to Chris before, even though he's done this way longer than everyone. But anyways, uh, so actually the game. Yeah, no, I, the game is fantastic. I love the puzzle. The fact that like you got to figure out, you know, I, I you know, I'm going to put this because because like he talked about in the description, right? You on your turn, you can either add or remove. You can't do both. And, and, and so it makes it this whole big puzzle of, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put one this time because next time I also want to put one that way, that first one I puts where I'd actually want on the third turn to pull off. So uh, there's a lot of thinking ahead and um, it, it's just super gratifying. And there's also multiple different strategies you can go for. Uh, I, I have this one strategy I wrote in my phone years ago and every year, every time I'm like, next time I play, I'm going to use that strategy. Never do it. I don't know why, but I never do. Uh, but hopefully maybe next time I can. And if I do, I'll post it in the comments. There you go. Andy, what you got? Well, hold on, Chris. I think uh, you got the most old man Chris moment there. He's like, I told you kids. That's right. Game. That's Don't right. Listen to me. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andy, what do you got? I don't want to piggyback completely off Chris, but I like a lot of what he had to say here. Um, and Ooh. I do think you sound like <laughs> a, an immature youngster, Daniel, when you talk, well, I don't want to play it online because I don't have to move the components. It's a beautiful game. And you know what's great about playing it in person? is you actually have time to think about your moves more. You have, There actually is some time involved. There's more strategy because it's not so fast and coming at you and blah, all the bells and whistles. I, I there, prefer- Is there table talk? Is there table talk, Andy? There's not a whole lot of table talk because you got to think, this is the thing. <laughs> I figured there would be if you were playing it. I love Zolkin. I, in, in fact, I think Zolkin could be renamed, uh, what, what is it? It's, it's uh, Gears of War is a, a computer game, right? Gears of War. Oh. Yeah. It could be called Gears of Corn. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I think it could be. I love the gears. I love, I love the different aspects. It's a great worker placement. What you don't like, John, is you don't like tension, and you gotta love tension. That's what's great about a Euro game like that. Is it's so tense. You do have to feed your people. You have to make these tough choices. You can't do everything. You have to craft a strategy. You can't just be all mamby pamby. You know, I feel like doing this, and I'll do this, and I'll do this. No, you gotta come up with a strategy, man. This is real life. This is it's. Solkin is amazing. It's a great game. Um, I'm going to do my next parody on it. Uh, it's either going to be called, uh, yeah, Gears of Corn or something about J.R.R. to Zulkin. Oh, <laughs> ooh, I like that one, too. Love oh, but, but to clarify, Andy, I like having to make decisions that you don't have time to do everything. You have to focus and things like that. But nothing you do feels any different than anything else you do, except for when you have to feed your people. And that's boring and stupid. You haven't played it enough. Okay. You can say, actually, I actually won the strategy. Going up on one track strategy. feels the same as going up on another track. Hey, John. Yes, really? you're correct. That's every track game. Anyways, but I actually won this game handedly by not feeding my people. Mm. So there is a strategy for that. It's, and I went to the soul route, which was thematic because my people were dying. <laughs> so I sacrificed them and go. I got more points that way. There, there's a valid point there to where you can starve your people for a period of time to build up certain things and then choose to be benevolent later and so, so it sounds like john you just need to play it with us again and we'll teach you the wow. ways of starvation and then maybe you will like this game yeah, all right we'll see <laughs> well that's enough of zolkin that's what we think of yes, it, it three of us really like it one of us hates it i think he's i think he's being very stubborn with it but that's okay um let us know what you think of zolkin and remember to subscribe round two fight All right, guys. Today we're gonna get, bring you a episode of Trade Shelf Play. Wow. And I said that really slowly because I knew I was gonna screw it up otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have uh, Tiny Towns, and I'm gonna screw this one up no matter what. Uh, Takanoko, yeah, yes, that's that's a yeah, and Tobago. Uh, all right, so standard stuff here. I'll start off. Uh, so I played 
I, I played Takenoko a couple years ago, and then I played Tobago for the first time within the last year uh, with Daniel, and then I played Tiny Town. It was yesterday. Well, no, no, you no. You played yesterday we, with me. <laughs> the first time we played it. Oh, okay. That is within the last year. <laughs> that is also factually correct as well. Correct. Sorry, continue. <laughs> but, then, but then I played Tobago also with him yesterday and Tiny Towns for the first time. I had never got that game to the table, though I did buy it from the Barnes & Noble sale. So I'm, I was like, okay, cool. I finally get it to the table. So I played them. Um, I'd forgotten that I actually had played Tobago. I thought I never had. And then we got the piece out. I was like, oh, I remember this game. And I like that game so much. It's great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it on my shelf because I want to have that one forever. Uh, I, I, I know I told um, the people we were playing with that like, this is the way I want Clue to feel. Like, this is how I want Clue to feel. Like, it doesn't, unfortunately. Clue is still a fine mass market game. It's the best probably of all of them. But but it, it just, the way Tobago plays where you're actively making the clues opposed to finding them, like, I don't know. It's it's super interesting. Um, I like how you can manipulate it to where it's to your advantage and, and all that. It's, it's a great game. Um, and then I'm going to go and play Tiny Towns again <clears throat> because I thought it was fine. It was enjoyable. It was good enough. Um, it was good enough for me to be happy that I got it for 50% off, but uh, I wasn't in love with it. Well, with a game that uh, you're going to go play with that uh, you got 50% off and that was enough, that means that when you trade and <laughs> I'll, I'll take pennies on the dollar for, for talking Oko. That game is awful. I don't I didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, yeah, it's pretty and you got the little panda and the, and the, and the bamboo and stuff, but it just, it, it wasn't for me. I don't even, I don't even know what else to say uh and uh andy what you got well yeah uh, so it's interesting i have not played tobago but looking at it it looks really cool um it sounds interesting it's not cooperative right no, no not, not at all yeah. uh, then I'm, I'm i'm down with giving it a try so that simply put that's going to be my play uh, i want to play tobago and give it a shot it does it does look cool the components actually look pretty cool too I don't know. At least the pictures online I'm saying I don't know if it's the main game. Is the normal? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a highly produced game before yeah. it's time. Cool. Well, I like it. I'm I'm gonna have to give that a try for sure. Um, as, so that that'll be my play. Uh, as far as my shelf, Tiny Towns is a classic. Um, I've enjoyed it. I know it hasn't been around that long, but I've, it's been around what four years, something like that. And I've always enjoyed it. It's an easy game to bust out. Uh, it can play. What's it's, what's nice is it can actually play up to six players. There's not a lot of games that play six players. I feel like still that you know are still strategic, um, and, and I like that about it. I like the components. I like the variability because it's different stuff each time, and the different buildings can do different things depending on what cards you're pulling. Um, it's a fun little, uh, game that, uh, you know, it is definitely, uh, more, uh, uh, abstract in a sense, but, uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I like that. And I like seeing who can build the better map and who can, who can do that better. As far as Takenoko, I, I actually get Takenoko and Takedo confused sometimes. I don't know. They both start with T and they're both Japanese, right? So, <laughs> you know, way to stereotype, but, uh, <laughs> I like Takedo. T Takenoko though. No, no, no. I played it once, I think, or once or twice, and I was just like, this is, it, it's very forgettable. It, it reminds me of, a, there's there's a lot of games that kind of fall into the genre where they're, you know, like it's just uh, collect resources by doing this and, and turn them in for this. And it just, the theme was lame. It was, I mean, it just didn't do it for me. It just wasn't that fun. So that's me. What about you, Daniel? All right. Well, um, I think I, I feel like we're. I really hope John's going to choose something other than uh, Takenoko or what he likes to call it. Taken. Noko. Take I have a set of <laughs> skills and I know how to Noko them. Uh, <laughs> I don't know uh, because it's going to be my trade. Uh, I I have a problem with that game like I do with Ticket to Ride. And that is if at any point you're allowed to flip over a card and mm. get 20 victory points just because you drew a card at that moment, it's out of there. Um, wow. I don't need that. Uh, for my shelf, I'm going to pick Tiny Towns because Tiny Towns is a game that I've kind of fallen in love with. It's uh, It feels like a roll and write game because you have this little grid that you're going to be filling in um, with buildings of different types. And what's really fun about this game is that forward thinking. It's kind of a, a theme for me. I love that puzzly feeling of games. And this one does it in spades. You literally are somebody calls a color and you're going to place it on your board. Well, then somebody else calls another color and you got to place that one on the board, but they may not be colors that go together. So you have to decide, okay, this, this color is going to start this building and this color is going to start that building. And then somebody else calls a third color and you're like, oh my gosh, that's a third building. And you have like this, this uh, four by four grid that you're trying to just keep all of that in your mind with. 
it's pretty great. And then my play is going to Topago because I always enjoy playing Topago. I'll, uh, I will play that anytime anybody asks. I did want to show the pieces here. Oh, yeah. These are the the high quality uh, pieces. The little little guy he shoots out little amulets. Do 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 do, and you got little trees there. Um, they're just references. It says like the treasure isn't by a tree, and then you put little cubes by, and you say, okay, I know they're not in that area, and you keep trying to limit it down until you find exactly where that treasure is, and then it's a mad dash to get to the treasure. Fun times. I like it. Tobago is my play. Gotta All ask right, you John. something. Yeah, go ahead, Andy. So when you when you see that little guy, hold that little guy up again. Okay. The little rock there's, guy. There's a little rock guy. Little Easter yeah. Island guy. Does yeah. that's is it Easter Island guy? Does that remind you more of what comes to mind for you guys? Is it more the uh the thing from Night at the Museum where he goes, uh, you know, I want some gum gum, yum yum. Dum dum, give me gum or gum. Is it, <laughs> or is it the uh what was the other one that came to mind? There's something I'm thinking of, of the thing from the Fantastic Four a little bit. It could be that. I mean, it, it kind of looks like an alien, like a big gray. jaw and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, there you go. Anyway, uh, I, I I don't know where I was going with that. Total brain <laughs> fart. Go on. Thank oh, you, I Andy. know Olmec. It reminded me of Olmec from uh, uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yeah. Olmec, tell them what they won. Well, <laughs> the choices are yours and yours alone. John, it's your turn. I'm sorry I'm talking. Yes, and it's during my time. Thank you, Andy. Um, all right, so. Trade shelf play here. Let's get this one out of the way on my shelf is going to go tiny towns, because if you're saying I don't like stressful games or games, there is stress in tiny towns, as Daniel was just saying, you're especially if you're playing six players, you're like, please, nobody say glass. If one more person says glass and you got five people to say glass to screw up your play and it's like one person says glass. I'm hosed. I got to figure out what to do with it. Uh, but it's it's a brain burner for a for a fun little, you know, looks like a little party family game. But it's a brain burner. It's tough, and it, it, and it makes it fun. And you can play it with all the different buildings, uh, everything but the cottages. You can change every game, and they will all work differently. So you try to maybe cater it easier, harder, whatever, to your audience. And so, yeah, Tiny Towns is a keeper. It's going to stay on my shelf for a long time. Uh, Takenoko, Takenoko, whatever you want to call it. Takenoko is my play, baby. I haven't played it in a while. And that's a fun one to break out. And you don't get 20 points by the luck of a draw pull and thing. Exaggeration, Daniel. And actually, you can play where you can only play that card the next turn. So you can't just, oh, it's my it's the last round. It's going to end. Oh, and in the, in the, in the Chibis updated rules, you can't just turn one over and score it. <laughs> so Takenoko is my play. It's been a long time with Chibis expansion. It's really good, too. Tobago is old and it sounds weird. And if it's anything like Clue, I don't want to play it. Clue with cubes is what it sounds like. Description. <laughs> Clue. So <laughs> I had the 40th anniversary deluxe <laughs> Clue that I sold for pennies on the dollar because nobody wants Clue. So I don't think I need another one on my shelf. If uh, if that happens, it'll just sit there and not get played. So bye bye Tobago is what we're going to say to that one. I, by I the way. To- I have to say something real quick though. Oh, to yeah, go ahead, and I'll say something after you. Yeah, he uh, he wanted it. He said that no one call. He, don't call glass. Don't call glass. You know what, John? No one calls glass. They call blue. The fact that you <laughs> even know that that is glass just proves how much you love theme. My you homies know, call glass, color those, those <laughs> or what they are. Yeah. They just call them by the color. That's true. I call them what they are. Yeah. All right, go ahead, Andy. <laughs> I, I would be remiss to point out uh, the fact that every time I pull that game out, I inevitably at some point start singing out loud this the theme song to tiny tunes oh. uh, we're tiny we're towny we're all there you a little go. Clowny. clowny yeah that work anyway all right chris you're wrapping it up <laughs> <laughs> that's right he was just in is? awe of my singing it, <laughs> it's true i was just i was just waiting come on give me another bar give me another bar um all right so <laughs> that's what we got for trade shelf play this this week and uh let us know in the comments what you would pick uh and uh, i think we have a commercial coming up after these messages after these messages we'll be right back have a holly jolly christmas it's the best time of the year or is it in a new tabletop adventure from around the board Harken back to the days of yore, where prophecy and attempted murder are in the air. Gather your friends and family for a game of hidden roles in an epic adventure about to be played out. It's Secret Herod. You play as one of two factions, 
Herod and his army of baby assassins, or as the humble servants of God, including Joseph, Mary, one of three wise men, or a donkey, one of which will be randomly assigned possession of baby Jesus. It's a game of intrigue. Will Herod kill the newborn king, or will he be thwarted as the savior of the world escapes to Egypt? Find out in Secret Herod. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh not included. No donkeys were harmed in the filming of this commercial. And remember, baby Jesus always wins. All righty then. Well, let's get back to uh, what we like to do around here. And you know what that is, don't you? It's game time. You want to play games? All right. I'll play. Shall we play a game? Randy's the referee? Oh, you mad, bro? <laughs> Round three, fight! So in this topic, I'm gonna to talk about a sensitive topic because I have been accused of <sighs> damaging board games before. I don't know if I'd call it trashing games, but I've been accused of things. And I'm sure when it comes time for Daniel to talk, he can maybe share that story or something. But uh, the, the, the question is, have you ever trashed a board game, whether out of anger, out of an accident? Uh, what stories can you share in that regards? Um, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about it. Why not? I borrowed a copy. When I first met Daniel, I borrowed a copy of Stockpile. Now, mind you, I didn't know Daniel very well at the time, and I was not the type of gamer who cared about the condition of games like a comic book collector. I have gotten a little bit more that way now as I've invested more and more of my money into this collection. There's a little bit of me that's like that. But at the time, I was like, you know, a, a well-used game is, is is a sign of, uh, you know, respect. Kind of like, uh, you know, they say, like, if your Bible's not falling apart, well, clearly you're not using it. Well, I kind of felt the same way about games. And so I borrowed a, a copy of Stockpile from Daniel, and uh, I returned it to him. And some of the cards were out of the box, I guess. And I, I guess he saw a little water stain on one of them. I don't know. But anyway, he accused me of trashing the game, and it was this whole big hubbub. Um, to be fair, Daniel's had some interesting experiences because he's, he's pretty good about bringing his collection to our local board game night. I remember the time someone uh, spilt a Dr. Pepper or something all over Great Western Trail, which uh, gave it a new, uh, new kind of theme. It was kind of sticky. <laughs> and a sepia tone to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was, it was nice. It was like putting really? a uh, Snapchat filter on, on the game. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, it, as far as other stories, I haven't, I haven't actually trashed a whole lot. Um, I do remember, I do remember a story that, that came about about someone wanting to buy a Viking themed game at a, a game auction uh, just to have a Viking funeral for it because they thought it was that <laughs> terrible. I thought for sure it was you, Chris, but might have been somebody else. But anyway, uh, what about you, Daniel? What have well, you done? Have you ever trashed a game or you got a funny story about trashing games? But, but before before we get into my time, I need to elaborate on your story here. I don't he, think he, he literally <laughs> Andy carries his games in these green Tupperwares to this day. No, I, I don't. Not anymore. It, not he anymore. finally bought a bag. He finally bought a bag like a week ago, and he carries <laughs> his games around in these green Tupperware bags. And he's like, "Oh yeah, I got your game for you." And he's like taking games out, and they're just in there any which way. And all of a sudden, he gets to my game. He goes, "Oh, here you go." And he goes, "Oh, and oh, oh, here's another card." Oh, and here, and he reaches in there and goes, "Oh, here, here's another card." And I'm like, "What?" And he goes, "I was like, what'd you do?" He goes, "Well." None of the cards got in there because I, I spilled a little bit of water, but I don't think you could tell, <laughs> but they kind of got on a lot of the water on the cards. And I was like, what uh, are you doing to me? You're uh, totally yeah. exaggerating this story. Totally exaggerating. <laughs> Not well, exaggerating that. at all. <laughs> and that was also like eight years ago. I've improved so much. You have, you have, you finally got a bag. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So my story, uh, I was, I was really racking my brain about board games that I've destroyed and I was really having a hard time figuring out. I had to go to one where my son, almost destroyed a game if you guys are familiar with marvel legendary it comes with like 800 cards and i have like tons of expansions and i had them all in this in the big box and i taught my kids how to treat their games and they don't touch the games and when they do they treat them with respect but one day four-year-old brendan i come downstairs and apparently i had it within reach and he had dumped the legendary box upside down that is 800 cards <laughs> of like unique pictures that I had to then organize and go, this one's Deadpool, this one's Elektra. Oh, Wait, this one has Deadpool and Elektra. Which one is it actually? Oh, it's Elektra. Okay. And that was that was a mess, but oh. nothing was destroyed though. So I couldn't be too bad. But the game I I myself destroyed, and I and I just remembered this, was actually my Lords of Water Deep. I was carrying a pile of games as gamers do. 
And I had Lords of Water Deep on top because it has a weird box and I didn't want to put anything on top of it because it would crush it. Mm-hmm. So I put it on top. And then I got out to my car and I went with the one hand and the box goes, woo, and I grabbed all of them except Lords of Water Deep. <laughs> and my poor, poor Lords of Water Deep. Oh, it and it said it almost came all off. Um, wow. But I blame the game. It has a weird box shape. So. There's that, but for the for the audio listeners, it it pretty much ripped one entire side Ooh, off. Yeah. So, it's it's pretty harsh, but that's my story, sadly. You know, it's funny now that you mentioned your stories. Like, I'm actually thinking of stories for myself. I I know I know I don't have time anymore, but I yeah, I have had so many games that my kids have destroyed. <laughs> I've I've quit buying them kids games, I, and I don't want people to buy that's them right. kids games because, like, I got a kid in a shuffle. Fun little game, right? Mm-hmm. Really cool components. They've destroyed it. Uh, King of Tokyo has been just absolutely just destroyed. Coconuts, Lumberjack, uh, Click Clack Lumberjack. A- anyway, I- I- I'm so frustrated with the kids and their games. The way That's they right. Games. That's right. We talked about this when your your whole thing was kids ruin games. That's true. Yeah. All right. Well, I've got a, a game that I did actually destroy, unfortunately. And it was at our, the four of us go to a monthly gaming group, FPC Gamers. And I was playing with a, the, a, a guy named Brian who... Some people refer to as nice Brian because he's that nice. And he brought this game that was like the prize of his collection. He's Viticulture Essential Edition, which I had never heard of Essential Edition. I've heard of Viticulture and uh, he really wanted to play this with us. Okay, let's play this. That's great. And so we play it. I don't care for the game that much. And that night we always have these red solo cups. And that night we had popcorn as well as, you know, different assortments of uh, soda pop to drink. So I had a red solo cup full of Mountain Dew, which I don't know why. I never drink Mountain Dew. So that's just, that's weird, number one. And the other one had popcorn in it. Okay. And so we're sitting there playing the game, and I reach for what I think is popcorn. And, you know, you have a different grip when you're gripping a light little cup of popcorn than you are a full cup of Mountain Dew. And so, sure enough, I grab the Mountain Dew instead, and I freak out. And I try to grab it more, and it just kind of squeezes out of my hand all over the table. I mean, oh, like, no. lands right in the middle of the board. Whoosh! And so everybody's just immediately, it's it's like when a kid throws up or, you know, somebody gets shot. It's like everybody knows what to do. They just jump in action. Oh, everybody's picking up pieces and running. I've got this. I've got this. I'm getting towels. I'm doing this. But there, it was no use. It was it was pretty bad. Cards were ruined. The the board had like the the middle of it was flaking off a little bit and everything after we did it. The worst thing was, I wanted to just tell him I'll buy you another one. I didn't know how if it was even available. As he's like, oh, this is the Vita, this is the Viticulture Essential Edition. I'm like, can I even buy this? I mean, I'm gonna try to, but you know, thank God I go home and I'm like, oh, I can get it on Amazon. I can get it sent to me. And so if you ever wonder what the etiquette is on that, to me, the etiquette is if you hosed over somebody like that, you go and buy them a game and you give it to them and you don't say, can I have the other one, please? You don't say that. You just say, here you go. I am very sorry. He gave me the other one, which I sold for like 10 bucks because, you know, at that point, that's all it's worth. But that was so that was my I felt so bad. I felt so bad that I couldn't just tell him I'll buy you another one. I was just like, I'm so sorry. You could have saved me the box, John. (laughs) (laughs) I <laughs> <laughs> that's true that would okay the box was fine for those of you who perfect are perfect condition yeah for those of you who are first time listeners that's a throwback to an early episode yeah several that's early episodes so funny. Yeah. oh man there's actually a, uh, an overarching storyline <laughs> yes. mm-hmm. that's funny uh so yeah uh i, I didn't want to point out john uh the yeah. etiquette is to buy someone a new game when you destroy theirs mm-hmm. i think it's chris's turn i yeah. i don't have an extra copy of a sock pile. It's Chris's turn. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I hate to deprive Chris of his time. Please. <laughs> That's all right. So, so what do you do? Yeah, if you don't have another copy or it doesn't exist, then so are so are you saying this is like an like a potential out I have for for Oasis? If the next time we play that, just the oh, drink no, magically gets knocked no. over, like then no, no more Oasis. Oh. There's plenty out there. Well, trust me. Have you ever heard of indentured servitude? <laughs> <laughs> all right uh so first of all props to 
props to Randy with the Armageddon uh, on the uh, little image yes. there. Well done. <laughs> I like that. Well done. Well done. So initially, I didn't think I was going to have much to talk about for this topic. I thought I was going to talk about the same story I've told multiple times about my Formula Day game, which had been out of print for a while. I loved it. I was super excited. Thank you, John. Um, and uh, my roommate, whose girlfriend at the time, who ended up being his wife, ripped it in half first time before I even got to play it. Blah, blah. And that's what I was going to talk about. But then in the pre-show prep, I realized I actually have another game that's totally jacked that I didn't even realize. So before I lived in this house, I lived in another one. Shocker. And I moved one in the move two weeks before, though. For whatever reason, our shelves just gave way. Like if, if it would have been two weeks later, my games would have been fine. But they gave way and I didn't have a good... I didn't have a Calyx or whatever they call these. It was just a white wire sh uh, shelving. And I tried to not make things on top of each other as much as possible, but you know, whatever. But anyways, the shelf came through and it came with that. And I think this box took the brunt of it because this kind of corner is completely busted. Oh yeah. And like, and then also I got the inside kind of, kind of like you have Daniel as well of the actual box as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it kind of sucks because I actually, it's Runebound, by the way. Shout out to Runebound. Yep. Second, there it is. Oh, nope, nope. There we go. <laughs> there you go. And, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I love the game. I actually have all the second edition expansions. I played that all the time back in the day. And But, yeah, that's that's my ex uh, situation with uh, Destroying. Not on purpose on either time. Um, I guess one thing, maybe I am averse to actually physically destroying them because I do still have, I, I've planned to make a shadow box of my pandemic legacy season one. I took pictures of the final board and I plan to glue everything in place. And then all the cards that you were supposed to destroy, I was going to rip up in little pieces and like, uh, you know, kind of like whatever you want to call like litter them around, spread it out, yeah, litter them around, glitter yeah. them around, whatever you call at the bottom, but I haven't got around to it yet. Yeah. Uh, I've now started playing season two with the same game group and they all kind of look at me funny when I like, when they're like, so you can destroy the card. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to put it over here in this box and, and I'll destroy it later. Um, <laughs> I have all the intentions, but I think they think that I actually don't. So yeah, I don't know. What about you, Andy? Well, I guess you well, already went. Never mind. Uh, well, I, I could go again. No, I'm just, that's true. <laughs> um, you already you went know, twice. It's funny. Chris, I just had to say this. I didn't want to interrupt you during your time, but uh, oh, sure. you said you lived in a different house before you lived yes. in this house. And that's kind of elitist of you to assume uh, that everyone had that situation because before I lived in this house, I lived in a van down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> and I you... live in a van down by the river. Early classic. You got to help man. me out here, guys. Wow. <laughs> As Joe Biden would say, come on, man. Come That's on, right. man. That's right. All right. Well, before we move on, we posted this question to the national board game groups, and they gave us a few uh, stories of themselves. So uh, here's a couple stories from the people out there. John, take it away. All right. Well, we had this from uh, Nick Volkman, and he said, after we finished playing the awful Seafall, we destroyed the remains. You can see, burnt it. <laughs> That's, maybe it would have been better to have a burial at sea, but I don't know. But he decided to burn his Seafall. All right, then there's this lovely little boy, uh, Claude the dog. <laughs> he had a good time with that copy of Gloomhaven. Uh, there's a work of art by Claude the dog from Christopher Robinson. Oh, that's cringy. And it wasn't, that, was, that was a pretty common theme that people were saying. And here's another one with uh, another dog that came home. And yeah, she came home and it was only Harry, Harry Potter clue. So it, right. if it was Tobago, it would be about the same thing, probably. Not a, not a big <laughs> loss. Uh, then we... <laughs> We also I shouldn't had have said game. what I said about that game, man. <laughs> this cool one where people use this. I mean, you destroyed a game to make a work of art. It was Dixit that they made this cool framed work of art to go in your game room, which is awesome. So that's not bad. I, I do like when people uh, do that, where they destroy a game. I think uh, uh, there's somebody in our game group who often does di like diaphragms. I think, is that what they're called? Dioramas? You got to speak your diaphragm. <laughs> not diaphragm, <laughs> <Danny>. Diorama. <laughs> <laughs> diorama of like scythe and stuff anyways it's a really cool thing so yeah so thank you for those stories yes. we had a lot of people believe it or not saying well my ex and i used to play whatever game but when we broke up i destroyed it had a lot of those had a lot of uh yeah had a lot of other things where it's oh you know legacy games and whatnot like chris has alluded to where you destroy the components not really what we were looking for we wanted more the accidental or the yeah mostly it was the yeah the guy that burnt his that was pretty we did have another guy that just as a joke was showing you how to you can eat and keep your board games clean. And he ate, Daniel would have loved this. He ate through playing <laughs> wingspan and got it all messed up and then put the whole thing in a dishwasher. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> was he eating <laughs> buffalo wings? It was something like that. It got okay. everywhere. Yeah. That would be, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty funny. So, but 
those of you out there who are still listening, what is the most horrifying story you've experienced with a board game being destroyed? Let us know in the comments below, and of course, feel free to email or what have you to get in touch with us if you're listening via audio. You're Round still four, fight! All right, round four, we're doing the top selling games of all time. These have got to be the best games, right? Because of the yeah. top ones that have sold. Like in the Brass, whole Gloomhaven, right? Ticket to Ride. I think that, I think, well, we'll wait till, you're talking about number ones. We'll wait okay. till we can see what we have number one. But to start out with, we're going to start at number 20. See how far we get. If this goes multiple episodes because of just how awesome these games are and we have to get in on all our stories about them, then we'll see what happens. But we're going to start with number 20. And number 20 is the amazing game Cranium. Ooh. All right. Coming in with a million copies sold. Came out in 19 and 98. Old man, Chris, what do you think about that? Two to four teams can play Cranium. I have actually, I've watched Cranium be played. Isn't this the one where you have like Play-Doh and stuff that you do things with? You do different things. You manipulate things. Is yeah, that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, is anybody? You've got, you, you've got like, uh, I actually like Cranium a lot. It's, you've got Play-Doh. Play-Doh is kind of a weird one, but that's, that's the category where you either draw or you use Play-Doh to create something and get people okay. to guess stuff. But it's also like you get to sing or act. It's a little bit of, a little bit oh, of dictionary, a little bit of. What's it called? Uh, Isn't it like a trivia game type of thing? I yeah. don't think so. Is it? Yeah, I've, I've actually got the deluxe, like, silver boxed version of it. I, I like it. We'll see you there. Look at that. So, uh, we got man, number 20 is a great any, game. Uh, so. Any cranium stories, Chris? No, I, I've avoided it like the plague. I, ha oh. I hate all of those mass market trivia or Pictionary, like, all those games. I, I can't stand them. I just... Yeah, I would rather do almost anything but play those games. Like that that's part of the reason I love like Time's Up is so good. Like it's it's in that genre and it's fantastic. But like every other game in that genre, I just I want to put a bullet through my brain. It's wow. awful. I hate those games. Okay. Cranium is actually a good one. It's one of the few that's well, actually yeah. decent. I have a cranium story I could share briefly if that's okay. That's sure, yeah. completely are. So in Cranium, there's 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 a I think it's called star performer is one of the, the categories. And that's where you either like hum or whistle a song or you get people to guess uh, somebody famous by just doing motions. And so, I mean, it's kind of the same kind of stuff as time's up. Right. So in this particular case, I was playing with some, with Jessica and a couple of her friends. Uh, so it's three girls and me. And I have no shame apparently, because I was trying to get them to guess David Hasselhoff. Oh, nice. <laughs> so what I did is I got up, and I ripped my shirt off and I did this slow motion running thing. <laughs> and kind of like hummed the Baywatch theme. So this was from uh, Knight Rider? <laughs> no, this was uh, this was Baywatch. Did they get it right? They, they like, actually did. Wrestling? They actually did. Oh, okay. well, very nice. Very nice. Okay. But that was that's the funniest cranium story I've probably got. That's that's a good one. <laughs> All right. One. I think I think we're ready for number 19. All number right. 19 is the amazing. This one people like. Uh Number 19 is Blockus. Yeah. Or Blocus. I don't know. Is that, do I always say it right? Which is it Blocus? Blocus? People call it Blocus, but I, I know. Think, I don't, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but it, it's calls both. it Blocus. I, think, I don't, people I've heard do. it said. People. It's a thing. I would say, right, you uh, play with blocks. My, sold, uh, uh, I know. Hold on, hold on. It sold 3 million units plus, more than 3 million. Introduced in the year 2000, 20 out ot, and plays two to four. Blockus. Is it kind of a, checkersy kind of thing but you're playing you're like or more like oh, an wow. area control kind of thing where you're putting blocks down i don't know i've yes. never played it yeah it's area control you're putting down yeah. these like tetris like tiles but mm -hmm. you can't put them adjacent to each other you have to put or from your own color you have to do diagonals uh -huh. so what's kind of cool about that is you can kind of jump into somebody else's territory because you you can jump in through the diagonal or whatever diagonal. it's actually my youngest son owen it's actually one of his favorite games he actually He'll play with it, but he loves to play it as well. So it's easy enough for kids to play, and he likes it for some odd reason. But he gets super excited about it, and it's, hmm. it is a really good strategy game. It was it's actually in our family. Uh, we had a board game gift giveaway. Kind of one somebody brought Blockus, and it was like, yeah, a popular choice. And uh, yeah, a lot of real gamers like Blockus. I don't know. That's I just realized I know who calls it Blockus. Who is it? The Brits. No, <laughs> you're there you go. Let's play some blocus. 
That was actually pretty good, Andy. Uh, yeah, I've never actually played it. I've always, I've been intrigued by it, but I've never actually had a chance to play it. So I, I, I would be intrigued. Yeah, it's right. it's a fun, cute little game. I mean, it's next game uh, night, maybe tonight, even. It's it's a <laughs> fast go. game too. I mean, yeah. it shouldn't have any AP unless you're playing with me. And you can yeah. play four players with it. Like, does everybody have their own side and they're working? Yeah. In the middle? Oh, okay. Yeah, you start from never the corners. Work. It would okay. never work for Randy though, because. He's colorblind. Oh. He's colorblind. Oh. And shape blind. And that's, <laughs> that's right. Colors and shapes. <laughs> True. True. It's a uh, weird that's affliction. That's tough. <laughs> All right. What's number 18, John? Number 18 is the fabulous Connect 4. Ooh, Sold yeah. over 4 million units. Introduced in 1974. Hey, it came out the same year as that uh, Columbo game that I had on. Uh, oh. There you go. Go. So All there right, you guys. Go. I have to talk about this one because it involves our producer, Randy. Okay. (laughs) Connect Four is apparently Randy's all-time favorite game in the world. And for our International Tabletop Day, now known as FPC Game Day, he wants to run a Connect Four tournament. And to prove how good this game is, he constantly challenges me to Connect Four. And I'm undefeated. Randy, who who beats everybody at every game ever, cannot beat me at Connect Four. I am a Connect Four savant. Just saying. Five games. I'm reminded Five by the, the voice in my head there. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I don't think what do you guys think of it? For, I don't think I've played Connect Four in decades, so no. I don't really I, I wreck my son at this at this game routinely. And uh, okay. and uh it's great. I, I love it, and not just because I'm wrecking my son, but what I love about it is not only is the game itself great, but he actually like takes it in stride and like he actually is like, Oh dang it, all right, let's play again. Like, you know, he's not like discouraged or anything like that. He's just like Oh, okay. You know, like, and I keep trying to teach him. I was like, you know, like, don't, don't worry so much about trying to do your thing. Like, make sure you're blocking me. And then yeah. when, when you can't block me, then do your own thing. And mm-hmm. he's coming along. He's getting pretty, he's getting, there's been a few times he has beat me, but we actually mm-hmm. put it there the other night, just a few minutes, a couple of nights ago. And I, I think I went like six and oh, but, but yeah, he, he was, he wanted to play a seventh. We just ran out of time. Connect four always brings to mind one of my worst ever Kickstarter experiences. Um, please do share did you kickstart kickstart connect four that's what i'm saying you did basically yes (laughs) (laughs) i backed a game called tour kings which i thought had a lot more to it strategy wise it it promised to be like a a mixture of connect four and chess and it's basically just connect four with (laughs) a little added stuff and i paid like you know i don't know by the time shipping and everything, I paid like 40 bucks for Connect Four. And I'm like, what am I doing with my life? What was Andy literally guy? brings that to one of our game nights. He's like, guys, guys, we're gonna play our new uh our new game, my new game tonight. And he brings it out. We're like, that's Connect Four. And he's like, No, no, it's not. It's it's talking. And we're like, it's Connect Four, Andy. And we just turned away. Okay, yeah, can we was... spell this game for me? I am not twerking. Yeah, twerking? I believe it's a twerking? what is it? Twerking? T-O-R-K-I-N-G, I believe. Okay, it's all one word? Yes. Okay. I was so like, are the Aussie components nice at least? What is it? What? Are the components nice at least? No, it's plastic garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so it is Connect Four. It's 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 absolutely Connect Four. And here's the worst part. Once what? you connect, once you build the thing, the, the device, because it has it does, I guess it does have a little interesting contraption to it. It the pieces are are two-sided. So your pieces and the other person's pieces slide out on opposite sides. Ah, which is kind of interesting because you can place there. pieces over pieces. Oh. But oh. uh once okay. you construct the thing, you can't put it back in the box either. Oh. <laughs> it's which a is also very mass market. You're supposed to put it on your table as a show as a show piece. True. Right? It's yeah. for sale. Supposed to do. <laughs> it's for sale. Wish Contact it was for me sale. later. That's a good game. All yeah, right. I think, snap. I think we probably got time for one more. This one came out in 1400 BC. So it should be a bestseller by now. I remember when this one came out. <laughs> 18 million units sold. Two player game of Mancala. This was one that uh, my wife and I actually played a lot when we first got married. Somebody gave us a Mancala game. And yes, I was saying, that's so funny because I'll tell somebody, this is a Mancala engine game. Like, well, what other Mancala engine games are there? Well, there's Mancala, there's Five Tribes, and there's Dust in the Winds. That's usually the one I'm saying is a Mancala type game. (laughs) There's not that many. Trajan. Uh, Trajan. Planes. Planes is like a Mancala type game, but it's crappy. I don't know why I like it. Trajan. Stefan Feld. Trajan does. Yep. Does it? Okay. Is it like the only thing you do though? Like those games? 
No, it's not the only thing you do. That's what I'm saying. That's those other ones. That's the only thing you do. But anybody else played Mancala? Anybody? Yep. Daniel still owns it, right? Was that what you were so, just showing us? I had five I tribes. Five Euro tribes. That's right. Mancala. <laughs> I played it like as a kid, like at like uh, outdoor summer camps and stuff like that. But we were kids, and so like I'm not even sure I even played it right because. <laughs> I don't, what we did, I felt had literally zero agency. You just picked uh, some stuff up and took it around the corner and maybe threw one at somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I actually would like to, I mean, maybe I should have, maybe, maybe this is on me. I should have in show prep learned how to play Mancala, but oh, <laughs> I'm not even sure I know how to really how to play the game. I mean, it's fine, but it's, it's yeah. gratifying. It's nice. You know, the components are gratifying or whatever. Right? Yes. Yes. I don't know. All right. Well, let's talk about the last two here, uh, John, oh, wait. real quick. Wait. Can we do two more? Yeah. You didn't ask me wait. about Mancala. Oh, okay. What about you there, Andy? I never played it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. How about we squeeze one more in there, more. Daniel? Is that going to satisfy you? I'll, I'll be satisfied. I really like this one. I really like this. Number 16, coming in number 16. Number 16 in your guide, number one in your heart, Stratego. <laughs> anticlimactic drum roll and <laughs> it sold over 20 million units 20 million baby came out in 1961 and it plays two players we had we played stratego all the time growing up love that game oh man they're always afraid of running into the bombs always the thing about where you're going to set your things up recently i think i meant i talked about this on the show i played this with both of my sons when they're just learning to play games and you guys, I know Andy's probably like this. You have a hard time not being competitive when you play a game, even when you're playing with your kids. And so what I would have to do is just randomly take a piece and set up my whole board. So I, you know, so it's just set up bad. And even then I had to, I'm going to move from left to right for as long as I can stand it. I'm just going to move this piece. Then I'm going to move this piece. <laughs> and I'm going to move this piece until I just have to start playing. And so that way they have a fighting chance of winning with that, with that game when they're little kids. But No, you're that's... making them soft, John. You're making them soft. <laughs> <Is that what? laughs> Make them I learn just the demolished them. <laughs> you should have seen that. Didn't you remember that was my Marshall? What is wrong with you? So well, we had a discussion might... about mass markets games, and yeah. uh, you can go watch that episode. I forget which episode number it was. But we said you, it's mass market. You just know it when you see it. Yeah. And Stratego is one of these mass market games where you just know it when you see it. But I would say it's probably the best mass market game. Mm, like if of... you just go with those classic Milton Bradley games, mm. Stratego, actually, there's something there. It's yeah. actually an enjoyable game that you can it actually is. play and and very chess like and, um, and you know, deduction and, and bluffing and stuff. It's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. It's not a bad game. However, it was replaced for me by another game, uh, Lord of the Rings, The Confrontation which is got that Stratego feel, but with a lot more theme going on and, and some more strategy, I feel. Mm -hmm. I haven't had that not, no, I've not played that one. No, me either. Yeah. Check it out. I, I never had an opportunity. I haven't had an opportunity to play the Stratego in my adult life. And I didn't have an opportunity to play it as a child because of all the stickers. So. <laughs> it was the that's first a, game where you had a sticker. That's a, that's a big <laughs> barrier stickers so like trying to having to put all those on and stuff when you have add it's just it's not happening it's not happening they've actually made something that came out recently called, it was like a stratego story i don't know it was another two-player game that had kind of a tug of war uh a uh, thing to it you know where you're moving the thing back and forth that looked really good too but i have i've never seen that for sale anywhere but stratego was, legacy i think there's something there oh there we go <laughs> maybe i was, write was, it down andy that's an idea was the artwork in Stratego the same artwork as Risk? I feel like they're very similar. Maybe I'm maybe similar, I'm, maybe I'm the just, same era, you know. Yeah. With the same maybe there's era. a million versions of both of them too. So I'm maybe I'm just see, used to seeing the two boxes sure. next to each other. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, well we talked about uh, we talked about twenty through sixteen. In the next couple episodes, we're going to talk about uh, the rest of them, and we'll kind of spread this out a little bit. So. Like butter. Let us know what you think of any of these games. Have you played these? I bet you a lot of people out there have played a lot of these games. So please let us know what your experiences are with them in the comments below. And always like and subscribe as you're doing it. Ding ding. <laughs> does that bring All us right, to guys. the end of our show? I think it does. I'll want me to announce the scores. Yeah, go for it, John. I'll announce the scores <laughs> because here I am with 11 points, which is usually a good score. That's like a winning score a lot of times. But it gets you last place today. Look what we got there. We got two people got with 12 points. Two people with 12 points, and that would be Daniel and Chris. 
They beat me by one. But look at Andy up there, baby. The hair, the face, the voice. Andy Barnett with 14 points. Does he have anything to say? That's what we're wondering, because now he has to sit on his soap throne. Take it over, Andy. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. This uh, this soap throne is brought to you by Dove, <laughs> which is quite moisturizing for the skin. Um, it's all about that Dove money. Yes. All about the Dove. Yeah, absolutely. Hashtag not a sponsor yet. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, it's interesting, guys. I, I, I mentioned at the top of the show that I just got back from this Transformers convention because I'm in War for Cybertron on Netflix, play Rhinox. It's been a blast to be a part of that universe and the fandom that comes with Transformers. I, uh, I have been uh, asked, invited, encouraged to join a role-playing game, a cooperative game. And I may actually take it seriously for once. Um, there are people that have, uh, used the, uh, Transformers role-playing game from Renegade, which they made their whole system, a whole system with that. And I've been invited to play in that. And then there's others who have used uh, D and D, uh, is it five E? Is that the popular one? I don't know. Yeah. Um, they, they tw uh, tweaked themselves to make it Transformers like, and, uh, speak very highly of it. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really curious about trying to do this. I've been invited to do that with other cast mates that uh, played in the Transformers series I was in and with uh, some other fans who uh, were at this convention. So I will keep you posted. Uh, maybe, just maybe, I can take it seriously and not troll people the entire time and attack my fellow teammates and actually enjoy a cooperative experience. We shall see. It is TBD, as they say. So, Andy, are you going to be playing Rhinox in this game? Or are you going to be doing something else? You know, I, 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 I'm assuming since I'm doing it with other castmates, I'll probably do Rhinox. But uh, are you afraid that they're gonna robot typecast you if you <laughs> if you do it again? He only plays green guys now, and uh, well, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I do. I, I think I do a pretty decent job at some of the other characters. Like so I can do a, a rat trap, which is hey, hey, you guys. He kind of talks like this. This is rat trap. Um, or I could do, uh, you know, actually one of my favorites is going back to old school G1 stuff and doing Grimlock. Do you guys remember Grimlock? The original no. Dinobots, they're no. kind of dense. So they just, Grimlock this, Grimlock, kick open door, yeah, whatever. Uh, I can do that. Mega I mean, it sounds do, good. Can you do Megatron? Let's see if I can do Beast Wars Megatron. It's kind of, yes, you hey. Autobots. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'd have fun with that. Okay. Very good. I like it. I like it. All right. That's cool. Well, I hope it, uh, yeah, I, I want, I, I am very intrigued personally. Nah. Well, we'll see what happens. We'll see. This could be I, I, the moment. This could be the moment that starts Andy on a whole new perspective of life. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he is going to be the role player, the cooperative game player. He's going to be like, get these euros out of my face. I want to play more Gloomhaven and Dungeons and Dragons. This let's is the not moment. Go, let's this not go too starts. far, but I will say it is a moment for potential <laughs> personal growth. There you go. Or uh, career destruction. Yes. <laughs> a trolling masterpiece. It could be. <laughs> So this is the start of something beautiful or mm -hmm. something disastrous. Yes. Oh, a beautiful disaster. Decide. Let us know in the comments below what you want it to be. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, this is a great show, but I think it's time to wrap it up. What do you say? Well, no birthdays today. No one was born. Nobody. Nobody. No games made. No games were made. All right. Well, that's it for today, guys. We appreciate time. you watching. Thanks to all of our wonderful viewers out there. And remember to tap those like and subscribe buttons. Also, be sure to join our Facebook group, Around the Board. Send us an email to mail at aroundtheboard.net or reach out to us on Twitter or TikTok. Until next time, we'll see you around the board. Wow. That thing is really, like, really shiny. What's Are you that? sure that's not just Black Panther? No, it's it's the Maximal logo. <laughs> Black Panther, Maximal. Oh, wow, that is shiny. You're right. That's right. I didn't see it earlier. Or maybe. Rhinox forever. All right, next up, we've got a couple of people giving their views. The Moons. And what say you guys about the three Lucky Duck games? We disagree. We oh, disagree. Really? We disagree Shocking. a lot. <laughs> uh, What's everyone's play? Oh, my play is uh, It's a Wonderful World. Okay. Because I, I beat him. That. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm more into it's... the fantasy, ab-driven destinies. Okay, so... destinies is your play? 
yeah, but Destiny's is my trade. Oh, so she's trading away your Destiny. Yes. That's last place. Yes, and I'm shelving her, her wonderful world. Uh, okay. So that means so. that means you're getting rid of Flamecraft. Yes. But I'm putting it on the shelf okay. because even though I haven't played it, from what Daniel said, it sounds like something I'd like to play. So if it's on the shelf, there's a slight chance it might get played. Okay. So it sounds like It's a Wonderful World is the only one you can actually play because it's Except at least play and shelf. Except for he's getting rid of it. Oh, it's, he's, oh no, he's, he's shelving, shelving it. He's shelving it. Yeah, shelving so there it. we go. See, marriage is about finding common ground. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs>